what got you into music? Then? <laughs> um, I've always kind of been in music. You know what I mean? Your sister is obviously a superstar. Yeah. Why? How come the both of you? What made I, it? I think every family fights and has their stuff. Britney's tour. She's down in. It's kind of warm in Brazil right now. James P. Spears, as we all know, took anywhere from three to four million dollars from the estate. Whether or not he is sued or not will be up to one person. The details of her care plan should be in the public forum. Those are Britney's communications. Let's get into it. <laughs> They are an all-in-one website platform for business owners like yourself. Whether your products are services, physical items, or digital goods, Squarespace has you covered. With flexible website templates, you can create a professional site without having to go to school to learn how to build a website. They have designs for every category you can dream of, so your site will have a custom look updated with content and features to fit your needs. I feel like my biggest concern with creating a site is figuring out how to charge people for goods. Like, I have no no idea how a payment processing system works. But Squarespace has it all figured out. Doing business through them allows you to accept a variety of payments, whether it's a credit card or Apple Pay. So what are you waiting for? Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sloan to save 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this episode and enjoy. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into It podcast hosted by me, Sloan. And today there are a few different Britney Spears related topics I'd like to dive into. I want to talk a little bit about Jamie Lynn Spears and the recent reality show that she joined because she's rubbing people the wrong way. No surprise. I also want to talk a little bit about Britney's lawyer, Matthew Rosengard. Even though he has been in the courtroom and he's been busy trying to seek justice for Britney, there are some things that he has done which makes me question if he's a good guy or not. So let's go ahead and dive into this Jamie Lynn situation because she's featured on a reality show titled I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Now this series is a classic. I remember watching Heidi and Spencer on this series back in the day. They were definitely villains of the show, but pretty much they take these celebrities or these D-list celebrities, they put them in the jungle and they make them live off the resources of the land make them compete in some challenges, it sounds really difficult. And by no surprise, Jamie Lynn is not a fan favorite. A lot of viewers are theorizing that they won't have to watch Jamie Lynn Spears on the screen for much longer because they believe she will only last a few days in the jungle and on this show. Part of the reason is because it's very difficult out there, but another part is that she's not that likable and it's a voting show, so the rest of everyone else is going to vote her off. My name is Jamie Lynn Spears, and I'm best known for being an actress and a singer. I would think that maybe all of these sprints would be like, who is this dumb redneck coming on here? Can anyone tell us what this Southern girl is saying? Why am I doing this? Why is Jamie Lynn doing this? She's been on several reality TV shows this past year, and it's kind of getting creepy. Almost as creepy as it is for her to describe herself as a singer and an actress, and to avoid the fact that she is Britney Spears' sister, which is really why she's there. Throughout the series, celebrities will be voted by the public to take on trials, which potentially include eating animal anus, being buried alive along snakes, and swimming with baby crocodiles. So, who, if the public voted, then they might make Jamie Lynn do all three. This person wrote, I will be very surprised if Jamie Lynn lasts more than four days in camp. I think she'll walk this week. I don't like water, I don't like heights. I don't wanna have to eat weird things and have weird things crawl on me. Uh, I don't know, I don't like that. I'm not looking forward to any of it. I don't even know what it's like in there, but like we could do like a talent show, right? If we're all bored and need something to do. Make up some dance routines, some TikToks, I don't know. Now, Jamie Lynn, let's be real here. I don't think they flew you all the way to Australia to do some half-assed TikTok dances. They want to get the tea on Britney Spears. Clearly, that's what producers are thinking, but they might not get far. Some of the other fellow celebrities were trying to figure out who Jamie Lynn is, and they were asking her some questions, and it was pretty painful to watch how she avoided saying Britney's name, talking about her mother playing the piano and how she got into music because of her family, not mentioning that 
her sister was one of the biggest or is one of the biggest pop stars of all time. One person wrote, I had no idea she was famous in her own right, to be honest. I genuinely thought she was just Britney's sister. Who got you into music? <laughs> um, I've always kind of been in music, you know what I mean? Oh, Writing and singing. You're a different musical different family, aren't you? Did yeah. it come like, was your grandmother into it? My mom plays <laughs> piano a lot. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. But it's not just the public's reaction to Jamie Lynn that's not going well. It's not just the public who has their opinions. The crew also have some feelings as well. Quote, but away from the cameras and scenes that aired on TV, it's her, Jamie Lynn's behavior in camp that has become obvious to the crew. She has kept herself somewhat separate, not really socializing and staying in bed, which I didn't think they had beds in the jungle. So just what, laying on the ground? Quote, it looked like she's really missing her family and of course, unlike the other celebrities who are all from the UK and mostly know of each other, Jamie Lynn didn't have any immediate connections. So she's probably having a terrible time. She doesn't know anyone. They don't know who she is. She's not bringing up Britney Spears and it's just making everything really tense. I mean, there was a moment where the hosts even bring up Britney's brother, Brian Spears, claiming that Jamie Lynn is famous because of Brian Spears and making fun of the fact that Britney is not a topic of conversation. Jamie Lynn Spears, actress and singer, but maybe best known for having one of the most famous siblings in the world. Yes, Brian Spears. I can't believe we've got the Brian Spears' sister on this show. Remember guys, Jamie Lynn is a person in her own right, not just Brian Spears' sister, okay? Mm -hmm. So they are really making it awkward here, saying, Brian Spears, I can't believe we got the Brian Spears' sister on this show, which nobody really talks about Britney's brother, Brian, even though I am itching to do a deep dive on him. So comment below. But because of Jamie Lynn's behavior, they feel like she's going to walk off set, which doesn't sound as simple as it normally does because she's in the jungle. So she's not like walking anywhere unless she wants to be dinner to some jungle panther or something. But she has been labeled as a flag risk by crew, which is interesting because that's what they labeled Britney Spears when they put her in that illegal conservatorship. But there are some headlines that claim that Jamie Lynn isn't speaking about Britney Spears because Britney had banned her sister from talking about her, which I think makes sense because Britney has always felt like Jamie Lynn has used her name for financial gain. I mean, look at Jamie Lynn's crappy book that she put out. I wouldn't want my sibling to ever speak on my name ever again if I was Britney. Though there is a moment where Jamie Lynn brings up their feud and mentions that she did speak to Britney before going on this show. Maybe that's when Britney told Jamie Lynn to leave her name out of her mouth, but here's that clip. So where do you live? I live in the country. We have like 180 acres. Wow, so it's yeah. like what you call a ranch or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And now you, okay, your sister is obviously a superstar. Yeah. You yeah. are a superstar. Why, how come the both of you, what made I, it? I think every family fights and has their stuff. But you know, I talked to her before I came here and we love each other. It's just, you know, it's a now, personally, I wouldn't just call their feud a regular family fight. It's much deeper than that. There are legal implications. There are lies that have been told. But there have been moments where Jamie Lynn has been able to open up about her own trauma. And maybe this is good for Jamie Lynn to focus on herself and her own name. And speaking about how it was hard to be a 16-year-old pregnant after being on Zoe 101 and having the world against her. Jamie Lynn got deep with another character named Fred, and here is a part of their conversation. Yeah, it was very successful. And after I finished Zoe, I had my, you know, love of my life is what I, you know, would have thought. And I got pregnant and I decided to keep the, the baby. I had a baby and the whole world was like, you're, a shit, you're horrible. Your life's over. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. And so. you feel that? You felt it? Oh, yeah. Because I got pregnant young. I was on a kid's show, you know. Your parents were good with you when this happened? Uh, yeah, they had a lot going on. But, you know, I just think they were just sad that I was in that situation. But also, it's your baby having a baby. I had to go hide away um, for a long time. What do you mean you went uh, hide away? I do remember hearing stories of Jamie Lynn hiding away, whether it's in Mississippi or I believe in, like she was in Vermont at some point, like their management put her up in a cabin there. And part of the reason she was in hiding wasn't just because she was a 16 year old pregnant back in 2007, but her sister Brittany, one of the most famous pop stars, had no idea. And Brittany actually found out when the world found out. I feel sad thinking about Brittany and Jamie Lynn's potential relationship because they could have had a great bond, but I think in fault it's 
due to the people around them. It's because they've been so controlled and Jamie Lynn wasn't allowed to tell her sister. She had this People Magazine special announcement of her pregnancy. So there were a lot of forces against them. Because they were relentless, I was like, what do you mean, what do you mean, depressed? I was, um, I moved to Mississippi and literally hid, put a gator on me. But you disappeared completely from... I had 20 paparazzi on me every day. I, I went to, but they wouldn't leave me alone. They came and lived in Mississippi, middle of nowhere. It was horrible. And so I was like, I hated it so much. I just wanted to be normal because I wanted my baby to be normal. And everybody told me I was going to be a horrible mom. So I was like, I got to raise this by baby by myself. And so I did. And, and, you, and you raised her by yourself? Yeah. She had a child at 16 years old to bring up a daughter. I mean, wow. I mean, I've got goosebumps just thinking about it right now. I mean, wow. Even though Jamie Lynn is so unlikable, I do have some empathy for her there because people weren't kind back then and it must have been hard. Especially like looking at the old paparazzi videos, they are not the same nowadays. They used to hound these celebrities, so she really did lose part of her freedom. Nothing compared to her sister, but she gets emotional talking about having this baby, having people against her, those trying to influence whether she can keep her baby or not. So there are some parallels between her her pregnancy and what Brittany went through with Justin Timberlake. When you went away, you were you you, you hadn't give, given birth yet. No, when I went away, well, it gets even more complicated. When I first um, got pregnant, um, sorry, we don't have to talk about this. Fine. We don't have to talk about this. Uh, no, when I first got pregnant, my um, they didn't want me to have the baby. Who's that? <laughs> Just a lot of people around me. So it's gotta be hard for a 16 year old to deal with because she already feels like she did something wrong. So then now to have the people try to take away this mistake from her rather than owning it, I mean, it's a hard decision to make. Not that Maddie is a mistake, but you know, back then everyone called, you know, a 16 year old pregnant uh, a mistake. So that's just where we were at that time. And um, Jamie Lynn expresses how people, I don't know who, but some people told her that she should terminate her baby, which isn't very like, I don't know, not trying to associate like that with Christianity, but her family's very Christian. So the fact that anyone would propose that kind of surprises me. Because remember, it wasn't Britney's family telling her to, you know, get rid of her baby. It was Justin Timberlake. He's the one that told Britney that he did not want this child. And she was quoted writing that this was the most antagonizing situation she had ever been in. The pain she had was intense and it's something she wishes never happened. Here's some more of Jamie Lynn's story featured on the show. But um, nonetheless, because you had so much strength of so, character to do what you did. And then when I got out of that, I um, uh, told my parents I was going to emancipate them. So that way I could make my own decisions. What did you do? So so, I was secretly telling her I was going to doctor's appointments, stuff like that. And I was going to meet with a lawyer. So you basically become an adult or you become free of parental authority before the time. That's what yeah. it means, yeah? And so what I did, though, was I said that I told my mom I was going to get gas one day, but I went and met the lawyer and I showed up at the house with the lawyer. And he followed me there. And she was like, oh, my, my, my poor mom. We put her through it. Um, wow. And then she... That's proper teenage stuff. Yeah. And so then uh, she was like, she didn't want me to do that because she knew that that would mean I'd probably marry the father's child and lose my fortune that I had amassed, you know, over the years of working since I was very young. She's like, just go, baby. You don't need to, you know, like, just go. It was like the first time in my world I had no one else. It was like I was in control. And you know? did your parents come and visit? Yeah, my mom did. Yeah, of yeah. course. I don't know what's wrong with me. Why well, I wouldn't take the easier out sometimes, but I just don't want to. So there have been theories about Jamie Lynn's pregnancy. Some people believe that Dan Schneider, the producer of All That and Zoe 101, the shows that she acted on was actually the father after assaulting her. But there's this boy named Casey that she was dating back then. And that's the one that, you know, Jamie Lynn's mother didn't want her to marry. And honestly, that was a smart business move on Lynn's part. I decided to Google her baby father, Casey Alridge and to see what he's been up to and just looking at the past few years it looks like Jamie Lynn made the right choice because back in well this is 2009 he got charged after a car crash and this was really the beginning of his downward spiral at that point he was charged with careless operation of a motor vehicle after crashing in the morning time and actually no other car was involved so how are you gonna get charged for an accident where there's no one else even heard it actually looks like he was taken to a medical facility because he was hurt. Also, it looks like 
by morning time, they mean 1.30 in the morning. So I wonder what he was getting into. Probably out partying. I mean, he had three other friends in the car. Fortunately, they weren't really hurt, but his injuries were far worse. Of course, he got better because he got into more trouble later on, like messing around with prescription pills, which is a no-no, guys. Do not get into the prescription pills. It's the like a gateway to the hard stuff. Casey was arrested for drug possession after police say they found him out cold behind the wheel of a vehicle. According to the arrest report, he had several different prescription pills on him. Now, I don't know if he was... ODing. I don't know what like drugs he was on at this point, but to be passed out behind like a car, that's pretty like a wheel of a car. I mean, that's pretty scary. It, it seems like was he planning on operating it? I mean, it looked like he was booked for possession of oxycodone, lorazepam, Xanax, and another drug called para oh drug paraphernalia. Oh, so he for the tools to use to which is interesting because if they're pills, you just take them. But that means he must have been like smoking them, which is even more unhinged. Poor guy. I wonder if he has a story about like that time in his life and maybe there's something really traumatic that happened that kind of led to his you know, career in crime. Here's another incident from 2020 where he got in trouble for some firearms, which is a red flag. He was arrested for burglary after police say that he was linked to a rash of thefts. He was charged with five counts of burglary of a storage house and one count of burglary of a dwelling. It looks like he also was stealing from a bunch of different campsites. So really, it seems like he's just absolute scum. He's clearly got a problem. Now he's stealing things to sell probably for money probably for drugs because they can't hold a job which is just like it speaks to how sick our country is with addiction i am i feel like one day when i have like i don't know i would like to stand like you know in support of people who are recovering from addiction because it's something i feel very passionately about there's people in my family who have been affected so it's just like this i can reading this story makes me upset because it's just like the cycle that people fall into and you can so clearly see it happening supposedly casey broke into a campsite belonging to a private citizen with the intent of illegally taking rifles casey tried stealing two rifles total no word on what type of rifles but he had been charged with burglary so maybe lynn spears was right not allowing her daughter to emancipate herself so she couldn't lose her fortune to a guy who has his own struggles though this interview from jamie lynn spears on this reality show is doing pretty well in the sense that people kind of like her this person commented this is the best spears interview i've seen another person said that was a genuine conversation which i actually agree um it seems like this guy is a kind person i never seen jamie as genuine in interviews until this conversation so that's sweet that some people are seeing a different side of jamie lynn and understanding how difficult it was for her to be a teen mom though i don't think jamie lynn had a great experience on this show i'm pretty sure that it has wrapped up and they have completed filming, but she's now refused to do any interviews about the show, which typically you do a show, you do some interviews to promote it, but nope, nobody is talking to Jamie Lynn because she refuses to speak. She kept her head down at the airport, she minded her own business, and she had nothing to say. Not really sure why, but that's the situation. Keep in mind, we started this video by talking about the fact that Jamie Lynn probably won't last long. This article reads, the Zoe 101 star has a history of leaving reality competitions early. She was cast on Dancing with the Stars in September and was voted out of the show. Only on week two. At the beginning of the year, she tearfully walked out on Special Forces just two days after Special Forces training, saying that she missed her children. So really, Jamie Lynn is not doing these reality shows for the long haul. She's going there, she's collecting her check, she's staying for as long as she can, and she's gone. So so then why are you going on I'm a celebrity get me out of here this person commented she dropped out of special forces on day three because she couldn't be away from her daughters but now she's doing this hmm okay another person writes why are you giving Jamie Lynn Spears a platform she petitioned to be the trustee of Britney's estate in 2020 and tried to move money into her manager's charge account this person knows their stuff which is true even though Jamie Lynn lies about being a big part of the conservatorship she was there and her name is written on legal documents period of time where you were involved in the conservatorship and wrong never involved in the conservatorship 
Never, not once. There are legal documents that I can show you. Or you know what? Actually, what the media could responsibly put out there, but they don't give an F about that. No, let's get, let's. Like, really, Jamie Lynn? Who are we trying to fool? Again, we have documents with your signature on it. So you can't really lie your way out of this one. You were part of the conservatorship. You were part of the trust. And you were part of trying to finesse with that money that was not yours. Now, this show, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, is airing in the UK. And the UK audience are a little bit different than the Americans. Like, to be honest, I, I kind of feel like the people in the UK are even a little bit more harsh than we could be sometimes. For example, people were left shocked after discovering that Jamie Lynn Spears was younger than Britney Spears. Now, this is just shady because it was trending online that people were, again, confused to learn that Jamie Lynn was actually the younger sister when she looks much older than Britney Spears because they have like a nine year age gap. So there should be some like, you know, I mean, you should be able to tell, but you kind of can't. One person wrote, Jamie Lynn is only 32. She looks the same age as her sister, if not older. Another person writes, based on what I've seen of Jamie Lynn Spears, I thought she was about 35 to 38, even though she looks about 40 to 42 but she is 32 years old. This is bad, very bad. And everyone always says that she looks like that one politician. Is it Ted Cruz? I believe it's Ted Cruz. Some person wrote, bro, I used to be so jealous of Jamie Lynn Spears looks on Zoe 101 as a 10 year old. My, my, how the tables have turned. Another person writes, just had to Google the age of Jamie Lynn Spears because I swear she was similar age to me and she is. So then why does she look like she's pushing 50? <gasps> you guys are so mean and enjoy. In other news, it seems like Jamie Lynn Spears will be getting a check pretty soon, but it's not a check for winning a reality TV show. It looks like her home was affected by a hurricane in 2021, and now she is suing the insurance company Progressive. She claims they have not paid for the damages that have happened to her home during the 2021 Hurricane Ida. She and her husband, Jamie Watson, who's also named Jamie, two Jamies, filed a lawsuit claiming that Progressive owns them a a lot of money. Quote, Progressive either neglectedly or intentionally failed to fairly and promptly adjust the damages suffered by the Spears family, thus breaching the terms of their insurance policy. So Jamie Lynn Spears doesn't like when people hold her money. Imagine how Britney Spears feels. But let's go ahead and switch gears and talk about Matthew Rosengart, Britney's lawyer who's represented her during her battle for freedom and for justice. A great friend to the channel, Real Cocky on Twitter, put together a thread and there's a few points I want to bring up to you guys. Now, I don't think anyone is a perfect person, but they do have their faults and I'm here to call them out. And that includes Matthew Rosengart because he's representing Britney Spears and he needs to do a damn good job, especially because he's out here accepting awards on behalf of his firm. He was like lawyer of the year. He's getting a lot of clout from this. So I hope he's operating with integrity. After the termination hearing, Rosengart said that Jamie corrupted the conservatorship. So it's not his opinion that the conservatorship was corrupt upon inception, despite being started on a false claim of dementia and no capacity declaration ever being filed. It's interesting because he considers this conservatorship corrupt because Jamie Spears was a part of it. But in reality, the entire conservatorship was corrupt from the very beginning. It's not just Jamie's doing, which makes me like question whether he believes this conservatorship was necessary at some point. This conservatorship was corrupted by James P. Spears. James P. Spears, as we all know, from public records, public records took anywhere from three to four million dollars from the estate. And of course, being a part of the Free Britney movement has filled us with rage. We want to see justice, and that includes Jamie Spears being held accountable. Well, Rosengart was quoted saying that whether or not he is sued will be up to one person. We've already heard that Britney Spears says she wants to sue her family and her management should be in jail. Whether or not he is sued or not will be up to one person. Whether or not he is sued or not will be up to one person. So it's interesting that he knows that they deserve to be sued and charged for conservatorship abuse, but he's kind of like dismissing it, claiming that it's really just up to Britney. Well, Britney has made her wishes very clear. So I think that he should be going, I guess, a little bit harder, or at least when he's talking about it up front with their choices. Maybe he doesn't want the other team to like understand what they're planning, but at the same time, they already know. 
Another thing that's interesting is that Britney, I mean, she said that she doesn't like court, but she also claims that she just hasn't had much of a say in court. She hasn't been able to pick her own lawyer. She hasn't been able to make her own choices. She's really had no civil rights. So I didn't love that Matthew Rosengart said that the court only responds to him. She really has no say in it at all. And maybe it's because she doesn't like court. She doesn't want to be a part of it. She's like, screw it, Matthew, you handle it. But also, I do think that she wants to be involved in the sense that she wants to be able to say something or maybe keep tabs on what's going on if she wants to. But Matthew has kind of taken away that right. Now, remember when Britney's father, Jamie Spears, was removed as conservator, there was another man who was placed as her temporary conservator. This was Matthew's choice to put John Zabel as Britney's conservator. But this was weeks after John's lawyer, Justin Gold, went onto a podcast and said that Britney was lying in her testimony and defended Sam Ingham, Britney's former attorney. Now, throwback to Mr. Ingham, because he used to make like what? I think like $10,000 a week on Britney, and he did not do anything to serve as her lawyer. But let's go ahead and talk about what John Zabel's lawyer was quoted saying, because this is the man representing the guy that was Britney's conservator at some point. When talking about those rumors, his lawyer said, maybe they're coming from her, maybe they're not as scary as they sound, maybe it's just not reliable, saying that Britney maybe isn't telling the truth about her care. It's pure speculation, but it strikes me as odd to say the least that a judge judge would just ignore a serious allegation. I don't see any reason why Mr. Ingham would have done that. Suggesting that, you know, Mr. Ingham brought this to the court, brought these concerns to the court, and the judge just said they, they weren't a worry. So, uh, essentially asking, like, why would the judge ignore this case if it was corrupt? But, I mean, clearly the system is corrupt. He says that when Brittany mentioned that she had never been told that she could terminate the conservatorship, he, Samuel Ingham, her lawyer, was outraged and filed his resignation based off of that. That makes sense to me. It makes sense that he would be outraged by something like that, because it seems very hard to believe that she isn't told that she could get out of this conservatorship. Which I understand. I mean, it's shocking to think that Brittany Brittany, like wasn't told that she could end this but also the entire thing is shocking and I totally believe he never told her that she could end the conservatorship because he was her bread and butter he made so much money off of her him being Samuel Ingham here's a clip of John Zabel's lawyer speaking on this podcast it is hard to get someone suspended as a conservator on an ex-party basis it requires some pretty serious facts but if it's true that in 2019 such allegations were made a petition would have been filed, but if something was filed in 2019 and it related to a conservatorship, it would absolutely have received a hearing by now. If especially if it was a high profile case and especially if there was urgency. I suspect that some of these things that we're hearing about her father are rumors. Maybe they're coming from her. Maybe they're not as scary as they sound. It's just not reliable is, is perhaps the way to look at it. I could be wrong. It's pure speculation, but it strikes me as odd to say the least that a judge would just ignore serious allegations. And I don't see any reason why Mr. Ingham wouldn't have done that, why he wouldn't have brought it up. If he saw some of these things and Brittany was raising these issues and there was truth to it, I can't imagine he wouldn't have filed something that was consistent with those allegations and then screamed it from the mountaintops if there was a true urgency. Now, before John Zabel was temporary conservator, Matthew Rosengart had another plan. He was going to appoint this man named Jason Rubin, who actually was accused of conservatorship abuse. So why would Matthew Rosengart choose someone who is so problematic that they have gotten in the same trouble as Jamie Spears? Pick for conservator of Britney's estate was once denied guardianship of his own mother. And after this news broke, you know, Jason didn't last long. He wasn't going to be conservator with this type of history. Jason's mother at one point had a trust that was in dispute and his own mother accuses him of abusing the system, claiming that his mother had paranoid schizophrenia and that he needed to have access to her estate. But his mother and Jason's brother, Mark, objected to the request saying that Ida was competent enough to handle her own medical and financial affairs. So this man already tried manipulating the system. Why give him access to then Brittany's estate? Clearly, Matthew Rosengart wasn't thinking the smartest in that moment. Now here's another questionable moment because there was a point where Jamie Spears could be sued for illegal surveillance and malpractice. Unfortunately, the statute of limitations on that passed and New York Times 
reporter Liz Day called out Matthew Rosengar on his lack of action regarding the 180 hours of illegal surveillance evidence that she placed in his lab. That means that the people who were surveying Britney Spears just got away with it and Liz Day tried to challenge Matthew Rosengar because she helped him get this evidence, but he did nothing with this. Why? Now let's talk about the care plan because Britney was placed into a temporary care plan which is sealed after the conservatorship ended. And Jody Montgomery ended up becoming Britney's conservator after all of those failed guys, after John, after Jason, they just put Jody there. Jody's been involved in Britney's conservatorship for a long time. She is a professional conservator who's also corrupt. We've talked about her before. But it seems like Matthew Rosengart has been in part the reason why this care plan is sealed. And we don't know how much control they really have over Britney at this current moment. Out of care plan. Yeah, do you want to? Spears is free. There's a mythology about a quote care plan unquote. Is There's there... a myth about a care plan. Yeah, do you want to? Spears is free. There's a mythology about a quote care plan. Unquote. So Matthew's acting like this care plan is fake news, but in fact, there was a care plan, which is part of the termination plan. This was filed with the court and why Brittany was able to leave her conservatorship under the court's ruling. But we really don't know how similar this care plan is to her previous conservatorship, which is, it sounds like the same thing, just a new name. Brittany's conservator, Jody Montgomery's lawyer, was talking about this care plan four times in a court of law with Matthew Rosengard, both with Judge Penny and Britney Spears present. Here's that clip. The details of her care plan and the progress she's been making and her conditions should be in the public forum. So I would just ask that when we file the care plan, we obviously will provide it to everyone who is a party on this case, but I think it should be sealed from the public. I don't think this is the best way to vet out a conservative's mental health issues and her care plan is just not the way to do it. I think we should do it under seal. And that would be my request for that care plan. Happy to file it and happy to have a hearing on it. I don't think the details of her care plan and the progress she's been making and her conditions should be in the public forum. I don't like the idea of sealing anything. I mean, if it's going to protect Britney, then sure. But if it's going to protect the people who are running this care plan, then no. Cocky writes, the methodical care plan does exist. If I was a betting man, I would say that's why Jody Montgomery was chaperoning Britney's wedding. But the media doesn't want you to know that Jody was there. E! News wrote that Jody was there in an article, but then quickly erased her name. So why are they trying to hide that Jody Montgomery, Britney's conservator, is present in all aspects of her life. Remember that Jodie Montgomery has been around for a long time. She's been around at least since 2009 during Britney's Candy's era. Britney's still being tied to Stanley Moss Courthouse and her trafficker, Jodie, should raise red flags for all. Britney did say that Jodie was abusive and compared her to her father. Britney said, I'm talking to you today, to the judge, because I feel, again, yes, even Jodie Montgomery is starting to take it too far with me. They have me going to therapy twice a week and a psychiatrist. She made me feel like my dad does. Very similar. Her behavior and my dad. Just a different dynamic. So Jodie is Jamie Spears part two and Matthew Rosengar is keeping her there. For what reason? There are also a lot of questions around Britney's communications and what that really means because there are a lot of people involved in her social medias. Keep in mind that the right to Britney Spears' Instagram is pretty much sold to the Britney brand, so she really doesn't have control. And there's people like Cassie Petrie and others like Lou and Taylor who are listed as players in her social media game. Those are Britney's communications. So just a Those are Britney's communications. So just a there are currently eight different people who have access to Britney's social media. So really, who is posting on her behalf if she's not? And we know that Cassie Petrie and a public relations firm has had their play with Britney's social media through a company called Crowdsurf. So it does make me question what is going on here. Just a reminder that Britney's communications went through the same channel during the conservatorship as they do now. Cassie Petrie of Crowdsurf. Considering Cassie's close allegiance to Lou and Taylor and 
and the conservatorship, that's enough to be cautious at what Britney presents on social media. Here's a picture of Cassie, and she's the one who's helping, helping Britney with her social media, which makes me question if that's why Britney puts so many like hidden clues. We saw Britney write about Liam Taylor in her book and how she is a monster. So then who's the one who's tweeting from Britney's account saying that Liam Taylor steps up every single day and she does this for so many other ladies in the music business. Like, mm, I don't think it was Britney. Especially when we see people like Cassie Petrie casually hanging out with Britney's dad, Britney isn't present, but they are out with Britney's dad and he's cooking for them and they're all buddy buddy. So there's a lot of like overlap here and it makes me question like which side is Matthew Rosengar on if he's protecting people like Cassie, Liam Taylor, and even Britney's father, Jamie. When Jamie Spears was in power, he got rid of Liam Taylor. I think against his will, but he did because Liam Taylor was having so much backlash and she probably saw on the horizon that there could be some criminal charges. I mean, there are plenty of court hearings. Matthew Rosengar was involved at this point and when Jamie Spears appointed Michael Kane to Britney's estate, Matthew Rosengard just handed over the keys willy-nilly. Keep in mind that Michael Kane was working with Jamie's legal team and he was also part of the Michael Jackson situation. Britney said that he was placed there against his will and she doesn't even know what he's being paid for. Here's a screenshot where you can see Michael Kane was appointed by Jamie Spears as business manager. Jamie did this without notifying Britney so she she had no idea that her business manager running her business was now, you know, taking this role. She really had no say at all. Brittany says her dad installed Michael Caine in an effort to introduce a new gatekeeper that he could work with. He abruptly hired this man without telling her an effort to retain full functional control of her money and material. So then why is Matthew Rosengart acknowledging him as her business manager and allowing this to happen when she is publicly saying that she had no part in this, she doesn't like it, yet Matthew Rosengart is just handling the things behind the scenes, which is probably why he wanted all communications to go directly to him and through him so he could do these things, which makes me question like, where are your intentions at? Because she said management, and Matthew Rosengart took her case, it means that Matthew Rosengart has a duty of loyalty to his client, Britney Spears. And if Matthew Rosengart is found to have been showing loyalty to any of the executive management that Britney alleged hurt her, he would be violating his duty to his client. Now there's another rule in the professional code of conduct, which now extends that duty of loyalty to not just the attorney, but his entire firm. Which means when Matthew Rosengart took on Britney's case, he and the entirety of GT Law now have a duty of loyalty to Britney as a client to protect her interests. Maybe Matthew Rosengart allowed Michael Caine to go and fill this position because of their prior connection. I mean, at one point there was an industry award that Michael Caine presented to Matthew Rosengart. Thank you for his ensuring continued reign over her brand. So Matthew Rosengart and Michael Caine are buddy buddy, and it seems like it's given industry plant because Michael Caine was part of Michael Jackson's downfall which we made a video about that in the past definitely go and check that out. In 2018 Andrew Wallet who's a terrible accountant who, who we've spoken about before and Jamie Spears stole Britney's entire legacy. They sold her rights to her trademarks Britney Spears, Britney Fantasy Britney Spears and her businesses without her signature. The rights were signed to a company that has nothing to do with Britney Spears and everything to do with Michael Caine so this guy pretty much owns Britney Britney's entire artistry, and that's why Jamie Spears wanted him on his side. We haven't, I haven't seen anything of Matthew Rosengart being connected to management, have you? Oh wait, this, what does that say? So Michael Caine and Miller Kaplan are giving Matthew Rosengart an award. So wait, but isn't Michael Caine, it's just so, so weird that Michael Caine would be giving Britney's lawyer um, an award because, for example, this is a, a shareable meme that's going around made by the movement. I didn't make this. Michael Caine, I don't, look, baby, don't sue me, all right? I'm just reading what's behind me, but let's see. So why Rosengard asked the judge to transfer all Britney's assets to Michael Caine? Handpicked by Jamie Spears with professional ties to Lou Taylor. Hands instead of giving back control to Britney of her own state and bank accounts. So the connections are getting creepy. And as I've alluded to, Michael Caine had a part in Michael Jackson's downfall. Michael Caine was Michael Jackson's business manager who was hired shortly before his death and continues to control his estate. There's money missing from his estate too as well. So it sounds pretty familiar. Michael Caine was actually in part hired because he was to help the estate and to build more wealth back. 
and he was even quoted saying in an email would a financial coming to jesus speech help or add to his pressure so it seems like they were trying to make michael's estate worth more and it wasn't going to help if michael was still alive so he was essentially worth more dead than alive and that's why michael kane stepped in right and what's weird to me is why does it say that he is her attorney and that matthew rosengart is actually her conservator what is that all about Cocky wrote on Twitter and ended his thread with this. Regardless of your feelings on the man, he has failed to do the bare minimum and move this case out of Judge Penny's corrupt courtroom. His loyalty seemingly lies with Michael Caine, CAA, Jody, and the courts. Not with Britney. Jamie Spears has hired a new lawyer, and this new lawyer has some thoughts about Matthew Rosengart. Actually, Matthew Rosengart was quoted saying, I'm the king of entertainment litigation. A little bit cocky, huh? So Jamie's attorney, Alex, said that Matthew and him were screaming at each other in the courtroom. Alex recalls the conversation after telling Britney's lawyer that he was dead wrong about Jamie authorizing illegal surveillance of Britney. Then Rosengart went on to warn him that he's the king of entertainment litigation. Alex told Matthew that he was wasting his client's money by pressing his claims. But Alex tells TMZ that Matthew refused to settle and said that if he was not paid $7 million to cover his legal fees, that he was going to file new lawsuits against Jamie and others. Jamie's lawyer Alex says that Britney's lawyer Matthew has wasted over $7 million of her money on nothing. Alex also says that Matthew has been fighting to turn over documents because it will be embarrassing to him personally personally and devastating to his clients allegations which i am kind of like that's bs like we want to see the document so that we can find the truth matthew had some thoughts about alex jamie's lawyer saying that he's a known bully he has conducted himself disgracefully in this matter making false representation after false representation including to the court. His entire end game is to bully and harass Britney Spears. Now, Alex does have a point. Freedom does not come easy and it costs a pretty penny, at least $7 million for Matthew Rosengard. He's actually addressed some of the criticism over his legal fees, saying that he's proud of his work. I guess at this point he was paid $4.2 million in legal fees, but Matthew says that we're proud of our work ranging from the hard fought suspension of Jamie Spears to the present where they're fighting for Britney. Britney has publicly credited Matthew for turning her life around, but declines to comment any further on the fees. Here's a clip where Matthew defends himself in a court document on his fees and what Britney's really paying for. Matthew Rosengart was making so much money off of Britney's estate, people called him a liar and wanted to point to this document. So what this document and specifically what people are pulling from are the fact that Rosengart says this, I am not billing for any time incurred in connection with this opposition. So what the media have done are now said that, you know, he's done work pro bono. He didn't charge for these documents. He says he spent time supervising and revising. So typically in a firm as big as um, Rosengart's, what you'll have is a rainmaker and a rainmaker, Google it. It's the guy that goes to trial. It's the guy that does all the press tours. And then you have usually junior associates who do the bulk of the writing as well as the legal research. So the attorneys that actually did write this declaration and did charge for these documents are named just below the pink highlighted section. The first one is Michael McCarthy. He has an hourly rate of $925. He spent four hours on this charging a total of 3700 through the firm to the estate. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Britney's estate is paying for her legal fees, right? Right. So there was no work done pro bono. Please don't get that confused. Now, the other attorney that worked on this is named Kelly Sherman. She has an hourly rate of $735. She worked five hours on this, charging a total of $3,675. Okay, so with the two attorneys working on this and charging for this, they charged a total of $7,375. Britney's estate was charged $8,000 for two motions. So there's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot of people who are being paid. And honestly, if they're doing the right thing, then the money doesn't matter. But that's why I wanted to bring up some red flags because you guys know me. I like to look at everything. I don't think Matthew Rosengart, like I said in the beginning of this video, that he's like, there's not a perfect person out there, but there are faults. And it's important for us to hold even the little things accountable. There is a moment I wanted to bring up recently that involves Britney Spears, of course, and Joe Biden. Joe Biden was recently doing a speech where he brought up Britney by name and she ended up trending because he confused her with Miss Taylor Swift. Harder than getting a, a ticket to the Renaissance tour or, or, or the Britney's tour. She's down in, it's kind of warm in Brazil right now. Now it's kind of a funny moment because we all know Joe Biden is like 81 years old and he's not fully with it, but interesting how Britney Spears was on his mind. Someone who needs Britney Spears on their mind is Sam Asghari because Sam Asghari recently was 
expected in court but wasn't in court so his divorce filing might fall through if he's not showing up to these hearings where he's supposedly you know breaking it off with britney so uh, i don't know if this is a strategy to get some more money but uh britney needs to divorce this man we don't like sam Azkari on this channel but we do like to see britney living her best life we recently saw that she was out and about she was wearing an orange dress she looked happy she had her dog with her so anytime we see britney in public it's a good sign because for for so long she was kept away but there are all of your britney updates i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode the podcast is like in a weird place right now because i want to do more interviews but booking people is very difficult if you know how to book people if you are a booking agent and want to reach out my email is sloan well known but we've got about 20 more episodes in this series maybe a little bit less uh uh, 20 episodes in this podcast and then after that i've got a few other podcast projects that we will be working on i've teased some of them to you guys but just so you guys know yeah right now we're just like i'm i'm in a lull where i'm trying to figure out who to interview how to book guests and just what to really do with the end of this contract but uh, if you guys have anyone you'd like for me to interview email me if you want to be interviewed, email me. If there's anyone who has a story out there to tell, I am happy to do it. I love doing interviews. Just right now, we're kind of in a lull place. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.